All right, so let's get into the information. August, you up with your funky, mm. How many of y'all saw this picture before? Yo, when I saw that, I was like, yup, that's the one I want right there. That was my dog. Get your with your funky. All right, so let's get into it, y'all. Watch this. Here's what I want you to understand. So this month here gonna be kind of crazy for us. August and September are the top two worst months in the market. Write that down. If you're in one of the groups, I want you to understand something. I'm not mad at you if you take profit this month. I'm not mad at you if you take profit this month. Because I don't know how ugly it's going to get, but we do for a 5 or 6% pullback, and it doesn't make sense to give the market all that money back. But I want you to think about something. I want you to always think long, I want you to think bullish, and I want you to think low volatility. Here's why. Right now, I always talk about the VIX. Right now, the VIX is still at a 13. That is really, really low. How many of y'all know what the VIX is? All right, so the VIX measures the volatility in the market. So when you see the VIX is low or the VIX is high, I want you to understand that when the VIX is high, that means the market is really, 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 really volatile. When the VIX is low, that means the market is really, really greedy. Does that make sense? What the? Does that make sense? Yeah, We're going to get it before the night over. All right, so the VIX is at 13, which is really low, so I'm not scared. I'm not worried. I'm not in, in the type of, but here's how I want you to look at it. Remember, August and September are the worst two months in the market. August and September are the worst two months of the market. Do we understand that? So now that I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this. If, you're, if, if I'm in a recession portfolio because I won't beat it for the year, I'm going to thug it out. If I am in an options play, even though I'm out January and February, if I get two sideways months, that can actually take away all my profits. That makes sense? And so I don't want to give the market back everything I made. So if I'm only up like 5%, 10%, I'm not mad at you taking a little profit, even if you got it out to February, because I don't want you to go in the hole unnecessarily. Am I making sense? This is how we understand how to feel the market out. And when we go back to, hey, and when we go back to the workshop um, information, I'm going to show y'all how to understand what the market is rewarding. So once we understand what the market is rewarding, we know how to pivot. Does that make sense? All right, cool. Let's go a little further. All right, so it's just data. So I want y'all to show y'all something, right? So the S&P 500 for the second quarter of the month of July, the S&P is up 3.1%. Now, if y'all remember, probably in episode 47 or something like that, I was like, yo, July is always a hot month in the market. I always try to tell this because if we can understand the sentiment or the feelings that's in the market, we can understand how to play the market, right? So if I know it's July is always a good month, this is why we made three trades in July. Y'all with me? Why? Because historically, now history ain't always repeats itself, but historically July is always a hot month. So that means what? I can be more aggressive because I know August and September is always the two worst months. What that mean? I'm going to be more conservative. I'm probably not going to put no option plays in the group for the next two months. I'm going to just watch and see how the market plays itself. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to force the market to do nothing. I'm going to be like Terrence Crawford. I'm going to be a good counter puncher. Take that how you want. And when I start beating up on the market, it is what it is. All right, watch this. 71% of stocks are higher. And watch this. In July, 34% of the market return was in, was in tech stocks. So that tells us that there's another 70, 66% of the market that's running. That tells us that the market now is getting returns from everywhere else. Does that make sense? Like right now, what I'm teaching y'all, what I'm talking about is understanding how the market moves. Your dad is your best friend. This is the blueprint for you. So if I understand, watch this. If I understand that the market has another 64, 66% of the market that's up, that means I can go look at other places. I can go say, what well, trap? Where the market is going up at? Here's what I learned. The market is going up in energy. 
The market is going up in industrials. That's XLE, that's XLI. That's the two ETFs. So now for you as a trapper, once you understand where the market is rewarding, now you go do the, go look at those industries and see where you can make great investments at. God damn. What's good, trappers, man? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Right now, I want to invite you to an amazing experience full of value. That is my community, Trappers Anonymous. It's 100% the greatest fundamental investing community on the market. Listen, your portfolio should be a masterpiece. And the only way we get you there is if we help you to learn how to invest with confidence. Now listen, I get it. Like you don't know a lot about stocks or maybe you've heard people say how much money they lost in stocks, but I can guarantee you one, because they weren't in the community and two, they lack the information. Our goal in Travels Anonymous is to help you, really to hold your hand on the journey to becoming a confident investor, learning how to navigate through the different events that the stock market goes through to take you from panic to encouragement. There's no better time than now. This is an opportunity only for those who are willing to be on the journey. So listen, man, click the link below. Come join me in Travis Anonymous, man. I will see you in one of our many classes, whether it's Moat Monday, whether it's the two hour class we do on Sunday or whether it's just a book club, everything is geared toward making you a better investor so you can triple your network and turn your last name to an asset. It's your boy, Wall Street Trapper. See you in a trap. All right, so because we understand it, so now if I can see this, so you're going to say trap, where do, where do you get this information from? Well, simple. I'm After every month or after every quarter, I'm going to go just put in a Google search, use a smartphone to do smart stuff, right? I'm going to go use, instead of, instead of, <laughs> instead of, <laughs> instead of using a Google for all the crazy stuff we be Googling, like use the Google for, yo, what stocks, what sectors return the most? This month, this month, what what sectors return the most this quarter? It's gonna give you that data. I'm not smarter than y'all. I promise you, I ain't. I promise you, I ain't. So watch this. Contributions from the top ten stocks, thirty four percent. That mean the other four hundred and something stocks in the market. And the S&P 500 gave us 60-something percent of the returns. That means the market is doing what? Shifting. It rolled tech for a little while. Now it's going to shift. All we need to do is see where it's shifting to. Once we see where it's shifting to, we can be a part of the shift. Am I making sense? We don't, we don't got to try to be guessing. Let's go a little further. So watch this. So now I got this from CNBC. They put this up the other day. They said, what's the, mo- what's the normal after a five month run because the market has ran for five months in a row. Watch this, the average return for the next three months is 6%, 3%. The average return for the next six months is 6%. And the average return for the next year is 12%. So it says that if we don't just get a recession, which I already say we've been in one, but if the market don't just do something crazy, it tells us that in the next three months, we can see a 3% increase. In the next six months, we can see a 6% increase. And in the next 12 months, we can see a 12% increase. How do we do that? How do we judge that? All right, cool. I want y'all to do something. If you ever looked at the S&P 500 and you saw the numbers on the side that say like 4,700, 3,700, y'all saw that before? So those are called basis points, right? Those are called basis points. This is where they're getting the 3% from. So here's what I want you to do every, I tell y'all this all the time, but nobody don't pay attention to me. Here's what I want you to do every month, every Monday. When you start off Monday, I want you to write down what the market opened at. I want you to put S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow Jones. When the market opens that Monday, I want you to write those numbers down on the side. When the market closes that Friday, I want you to put those numbers down on the side. And I want you to understand if the market went up or down in that week. Y'all with me on that? That's how you're going to gauge what the market is doing. They're not gauging individual stocks. They're engaging the indexes as a whole. Am I making sense? If we can understand that, if we understand how the market moves, we can understand how to play the game. Let's go a little further. All right, so watch this. So now 
because they understand that the market is now doing what's called, a, they are now anticipating what's called a soft landing. So now they're anticipating that, yo, you know what? This market might be running. So now what they do is they change their outlook. So prior to the Fed putting that return up, they were saying the market could be at 4,400, 4,600, 4,000, 4,000, 4,700. These are banks. Now, because of what's going on now in the market, they see the market doing better. Now they change the outlook to what? 4,900, 4,800, 4,600, 4,700, 4,800. Is that a declining market or is that a market that's going up? Going where? Because right now the market at 45. What I just figured out was now every time the S&P 500 hits a little bit above 4,600, it always sells off. I'm going to give you two, in the, two things that I just realized because I'm a data person. Anytime the 10-year the bond gets at 4%, the market always sells off. Every time the S&P 500 hits 4,600, the market always sells off. So what does that tell us? That tells us if the S&P 500 can break 4,600, we might get a good run. Oh, man, I'm tapping that pin again. Now, anytime the, S &P, anytime the 10 year bond, the 10 year notes get the 4%, the market always sells off. Why? Because that is a, a, in, that is a realm of uncertainty. That means the market is going in the wrong way. Anytime the long bond is giving you a lesser return than a short bond, the market gets scared. It's called an inverted yield curve. Y'all with me right now? Am I making sense? Am I making sense? One of the things I want y'all to understand is I want y'all to understand the things to look at. If I can show you what to look at and if I can show you what to identify, now you can play the game without me. I'm going to keep it real with you. My goal is to teach you, but my goal ain't for you to need me. I don't want you to need me. I want you to be able to identify without me. I want you to rock with me because you just be like, yo, trap that guy and I won't rock with him. I don't want you to rock with me because you need me because then you become dependent on me. And what's my favorite saying? If you allow them to feed you, you give them permission to starve you. If you're dependent on me, you're giving me permission to starve you. Don't give me that permission. Don't give me that. Because some days I'm not going to want to do nothing. And now because I ain't doing nothing and you press, now you mad at me. Trap, where the play is at? I don't know. My play is already running. Where your play is at? I got in the group because I was waiting on you to put the play. Well, fam, I don't day trade. Fam. I trade when I feel like it. I trade when things line up. I trade when I understand. I'm, watch this. I trade when the possibilities and the probabilities are in my favor. 